Hi guys! Today we'll talk about the GAB equation and how to use it in moisture sorption isotherms. We'll have a sample computation later in this video. I personally studied this lesson in my graduate class and I had a hard time learning this, which is why I created this video so that you can easily learn how to calculate this equation. Previously, we discussed how to calculate the BET equation using Excel. The GAB equation is similar with that equation as it has the same underlying principle, physical absorption of multi-layer water. Its theoretical backgrounds came from the refinement of the Langmuir and BET models. So the term GAB is actually based on the names of the people who devised this model, namely Guggenheim, Anderson, and De Bauer. This model is based on the principle that the second layer of water has the same properties with that of its succeeding layers. In this example, this is the second layer and on top of it is the succeeding layers. Gab states that all this has the same properties and it's different from the property of the monolayer and from that of liquid water. And because of this, these layers of water can be accounted for by adding the variable k in our equation. And due to its success, the GAB model is being recommended by the European project group COST90. This model is suitable for a wide range of water activity. Unlike BET, if you can recall, it is limited to a water activity range of less than 0.5. However, the GAB model can be applied to food products where the water activity is from 0 to 0 0.95. So that's the brief overview of the GAB equation. Now let's move on on how to use the GAB equation. So this is the GAB equation right here and if you look at it, it's quite similar to the BET equation except for an additional variable which is the variable K. AW is the water activity, M is the moisture content, MO is the monolayer water or monolayer value, K and G are constants. So how do we calculate for water activity or moisture or monolayer value using the GAB equation? Well, first off, so I'm going to label this as equation 1 because this is where we are starting, equation 1, and I'm going to write equation here, number 2. And you would want to rearrange this equation to a uh, to form a quadratic formula or a quadratic equation. So we have here our second equation. If you can see, you have here water activity squared, uh, water activity, and a constant. And if you could, if you can see, there's a semblance to the quadratic equation. And so that we can see it more, let's manipulate it further so water activity over m is equals to a water activity squared plus b water activity plus c so what i'm gonna do is encircle which is which so this group is equal to a this group right here is equal to b and this whole coefficient group is equal to C. So what we can do to have or to get the values for A, B, and C, we can plot this equation where water activity is the X value and water activity over moisture is the Y value. What you want to have is a second degree polynomial graph so that you can have uh, the three variables, the A, B, and C. And we'll, we'll get to it later when we go to the example. So once we have the values for A, B, and C, 
we would now want to get the value water activity through the quadratic equation. So that's for the water activity. To get the monolayer value, we would use this equation 1 over b squared minus 4ac. So those are the equations that you would be needing to solve or to calculate using the Gab equation. Now let's go to our example. So to demonstrate how to calculate using Gab equation, I've used this study, their data here. I'm going to include the citation of this paper down in the description below so you can check. I've used the ginger, the data for ginger. Let's just highlight that and also take note of this water activity values. So let's go to Excel now. And what I did is copied the values. So water activity here and their corresponding moisture content. So the first thing we would need to do is calculate for the water activity over moisture. And this is because water activity is our x value and the ratio of water activity and moisture content is our y value. And the good thing about Excel is we can calculate it automatically. So we have our x values and y values. The next thing that I would do is get a scatter plot and select the data that we would need. Again, x values is the water activity and the y values is the ratio. And you have something like this. Next thing we need to do is add a trend line, a polynomial trend line with order 2. We would also like to have the equation of the line displayed as well as the R squared value. I mean, the R squared is something that we look for to see the goodness of it. Going back, we now have our A, B, and C values, which is negative 0 0163, 0 0.1754, and 0 0.0127. So the next thing we need to calculate is the monolayer value. And the monolayer value is depicted by this equation here. We have 1 divided by the square root of b squared. You can put it b9 times b9 minus 4 multiplied by a multiplied by c. So we would have value, monolayer value of 5.046645. We will summarize our values later and we'll compare it with what the study got. So the next thing that we need to calculate is the water activity. So again, we're going to use this equation. And I got this from the equation of the line. And from this equation, we can substitute y with uh, water activity divided by moisture content. So let's just do that. And our x values here is our water activity. So substitute that and this also. So we'd have something like this. The next thing we need to do is substitute moisture with our monolayer value, which is 5.04645. We can simplify this left side of the equation to and to do that I'll just divide 1 by 5.046645 because this is the same as 1 divided by 5.046445 multiplied by water activity so that will have something like 0 0.198151 water activity and why did I do that? This is because so that we can simplify this equation. So you can see that we can combine the water activity on the left side with the 0.1754 water activity. And let's just do that. So let's transfer this to the other side. And we can move this at the back of the equation. So to simplify this further, 
we can have it uh, 0 0.1754 minus 0 0.198151 which gives us a value of negative 0 0.022751 so now that we have our simplified quadratic equation we can now use the quadratic formula to solve for this and you can do this with online calculators or quadratic equation solvers but I'm just gonna use I'm just gonna show you how it would look like so X is water activity again B is this one so it's negative 0 0.022751 again negative 0 0.022751 the water uh, A is negative 0 0.1673 C is 0 0.0127 and for the denominator we'd have 0 0.1673 so I'll just let you calculate that and we would have two answers because you'd get the, the positive and another one for the negative so the answer would be 0 0.21579 and negative 0 0.35178 uh, of course you can't have water activity below zero so we'll just cross this off this is the water activity value that we would be using so again let's just summarize that a b c monolayer and water activity so let's just copy this copy this this three values so let's just compare it with what the study got again ginger I'm gonna highlight I'm gonna highlight this so have here gab for a we have negative 1673 and their values negative 0 0.1688 for the B and for the B we have 0 0.175 for their value is 0 0.1760 it's quite close for the C it's it's the same so let's go down here I'm gonna highlight it first so that it's, it would be easier there so or R squared we have the same R squared Let's go back to the graph. So we have the same R squared 0 0.9983, which is very good. For the GAB monolayer value, it's 5.025. It's relatively close. And for the water activity, it's it's the same if you uh, if you round it up. So that's how you use the GAB equation. If you like this video, if you learned something, please comment it down below. So that's all for today, and I hope you learned a lot. Keep safe and stay healthy.